everyone. Um, quick vlog today. I'm not feeling well. Um, I'm like ridiculously stiff this morning. Um, and I haven't felt, um, I haven't felt stiff. Like my, I haven't had like bone and joint issues in quite a while. Um, <laughs> I woke up too and I was, I was like sad and I'm like, why am I sad? Like I had a, I, just as a timeline, I, I'm now, um, it's, it's near the end of April. So I feel like I'm coming up on the cusp of two years since my breast cancer diagnosis and um, about a year and a half since I've been on meds. And the med concoction like screws around with your joints and your bones and all that stuff, the tamoxifen and all that stuff. Um, maybe the Lupron too, I don't even know. Uh, so I do Zameda infusions every six months, which is supposed to counteract um, the bone loss issues or, or the potential osteoporosis that people sometimes get when they're on tamoxifen. And as much as like when I have the Zameda, it sucks. <laughs> the first, if you haven't had a Zameda infusion yet, the first one sucks. I'm not going to powder coat it at all. It sucks. You basically get the flu for like a week after. Um, and as expected, like that's what your body just does, but it's all in the name of like, you know, having strong bones when you get older, which is fine. Like I'll suck it up. I'm on Zameda, um, for three years, every six months. So I'm now, um, halfway through, but when I got, when I, um, and I do get better by the way, like the second one, I didn't, I wasn't sick for as long. Um, the third one took like two days. Well, you can watch the other vlog. The third one took like two days for it to kick in. And then I got the fever. Actually, I don't even know if I got a fever. I had, I had different symptoms after the third one, but when I, like yesterday was a really good day. I, it's not like I'm sad in general. I just saved my sadness for all of you. Um, yesterday was a really good day. Like I, I got my couch. I actually have a living room now. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on pieces. I have pillows. I, I, ha I did meditation this morning outside my window. Like I'm glad that I have this chair because it's tall and when I'm really like stiff and hurting, I have a pillow behind me, but it can, it at least like supports me because it, because the back is tall. Like I'm, I have a carpet down. It looks like a normal like living room and, and I drank out of a mug. <laughs> I drank out of a mug this morning. Like I bought a dish set and I'm just like watching my, my oatmeal get cold because I can't sit in the chair. And um, I didn't like sleep weird. I, I have this like awesome bed now. I highly suggest, by the way, I don't know if it's the bed, but the bed that I got is an adjustable one, which A, lowers my snoring. I, I hardly snore at all anymore, which is awesome. Um, but I don't get hot flashes nearly as much at night either. The, the mattress itself says something about it being cooling. I don't know what makes it cooling. And then I bought UGG sheets, like UGG UGG sheets that said that they were cooling. And those are like the best sheets ever. So I, like last night I felt I went to go to sleep and I realized that my fan wasn't next to my bed and I was too tired to go, go up and find it. And I'm like, I'll just wing it and go to sleep and see what happens. And I slept all night and I'm wearing like flannel pants. <laughs> And, and, um, yeah, I'm not even dressed. I'm supposed to be at work. <laughs> Thank God I have a flexible boss and a flexible work schedule because I'm like, I, I can't, my body is just not letting me get up and go. I've been like in slow-mo. I, I even like, I stretched out this morning. I did cat and cow poses. I did child pose. I even brought out my big white foamy roller thing, like the, the big one, the three foot one. And I laid on it. Um, with my spine up and down the the um, the roller, and I just I I just I lay on it on my back and um, just kind of like roll from side to side, which helps my because my tailbone is just really 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 stiff. And I didn't do any. I mean, granted, I've been putting a lot of furniture and stuff together, but I haven't done anything in days. I I, I don't understand what happened. <sighs> Last night I, I went for dinner with a friend of mine for her birthday and I had such a nice time and it seemed so normal. And like, God bless like kind humans out there, a woman who I don't know, 
was giving away um, clothes on uh, By Nothing Group. And um, I picked up clothes from other people before and, and sometimes like they just don't fit right or they, or they just look like they've been in the closet for 60 years or something. And I opened it up and it was all shirts that were like flattering here, but loose in the waist. And I'm like, w w what? <laughs> and there was even like a sundress in there. Cause like my rack is great. It's just my stomach. <laughs> and with all like, I, I have lost weight. I'm almost in the, in the next 10 pound thing lower than what I am right now. Um, but I'm noticing like my belly is, is going down and it's not, um, I think it's because I'm moving so much more. I'm all over the place, shocker. Um, but when I woke up and I felt like this and I, I thought I would like, if I stretched out, I'd feel better. And I stretched out and I felt slightly better. But then when I go sit to have breakfast, like it just, it hurts to sit in the chair and it hurt. Like even now I'm not in pain, but I'm not comfortable either. Um, so I go on my phone and I'm like, okay, so what's coming up? Realize I didn't put any of my next Luprons in my Google calendar, which I need to do. Um, but my Lupron is coming up in like, I think a week and a half or so, which makes sense of why I would be like randomly sad for no reason whatsoever. It's not even like I'm sad. It's just, you get this urge to cry for no reason. Um, but my bones just hurt. And when you're on all these freaking meds, it's like, I don't even know why my bones hurt. Is it because I'm 51? Is it because I'm on like A, B, and C? I don't know. And it makes me actually like look forward to getting the Zameda because while it sucks afterwards, it's making my bones stronger. Um, when I actually have the Zameda infusion like, and the side effects start to kick in, my my bones just feel really really stiff like in the beginning if you watched my first Zameda thing like my hands were just it felt like my bones were like twice as big as they are and it was hard to like grip and stuff um but like it lasted for so long and then it, and then it went away and i'd rather like suck it up six times ever and then have strong bones but on mornings like this it's like you would think after like, I've gone through three Zometas, my fourth one is coming up soon. And maybe my body realizes that like, oh, it's coming up. It's not coming up super soon. I think it's like two months away. Uh, wait, where are we? No, it's only like six weeks away. So, I, and I remember this last time too, it's almost like my body knows that it's coming up and like, and I don't even know if this is how it works, but it feels like my body's like, oh yeah, the Zameda's wearing off because like so much time has gone by since my last one. And like now my bones start to hurt and I need the Zameda so that my bones don't hurt. I don't even know if that's true or not. That's just how I think in my head of how it all works. Um, yeah, so I'm moving slow and I should be <laughs> getting up and getting dressed and going to work. And I just had to take a freaking time out. And I, this is where I do get compassionate with myself that I, you know, message my boss and I'm like, I'm just moving slow. Like I'm so stiff and I don't want to work from home today. Like I want to be normal. I want to go into work, but I'm just moving slow. And like, especially for me, like as a person and like as a single parent, like I'm used to like go, 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 do, do, do. And, and when life just slows you down, it, it, it's frustrating. And I'm compassionate with myself to slow down. So, um, you know, I guess this loops back to the repeated conversation of like, you know, yes, you have your boobs replaced and, and like, look at my nice rack, you know, and <laughs> on a positive note, I will say like, <laughs> Implants in a, in a tank top, like, look pretty nice. <laughs> I don't know. He did a good job. Um, and I don't want my nipples back on either. That's another conversation. Not ever. Just, like, right not now. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying, especially going to the suburb. Like, I will enjoy wearing tops where I don't even have to wear a bra. Positive thinking. <laughs> Who would have thought after all this shit? I'd be like, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for my, my foobs right now. And I, I, 
obviously because my hands are on them right now. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't feel as foreign with them anymore. Um, I can't say that I'm fully regaining feeling with stuff because I'm, I don't really know if I am or not. The, the, the phantom feelings, like I, I, it screws with your head. Like, I don't even really know if that's what I'm feeling or if, if, if it's just like remembering what things feel like. I don't know. But I do think over time and not to be, <laughs> don't do this in public, but I do think over time, if you do touch them and I know that, that I know that that's a big deal. It takes a long time to get there, people. It took me a very, very long time. What was it, three vlogs ago, I called them my boobs for the first time since like all this shit happened. Um, but I do feel like you can get the, like some sensation back. Cause like as a whole, if I do this, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get a lot of men looking at this and be like, oh look, she's touching your boobs. No, it's not that kind of video. <laughs> you know what's funny? My <laughs> and then I really gotta go. My 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 largest demographic right now are men from fifty five to sixty four. Um, well, that's it. Men from fifty five to sixty four. Men compared to women right now are almost seventy five percent of my viewership on these blogs. And I wonder, like, oh, are they supportive? Like the supporting their friends or or. I don't know, loved ones or wives or whatever, you know, um, going through this journey or are they looking for porn because they see boobs and they're like, wait a minute, that's not what I was looking for. Who the heck knows? But um... <laughs> anyway, so I'm moving slow and my, I had caffeinated coffee this morning because my head hurt a little bit, which my head like, uh, hardly ever hurts anymore, but is today for some reason. Um, when I get like this too, like my, my boobs feel like they weigh like 20,000 pounds. So like I need to wear a more supportive bra. I go back to plastics, by the way, next week for, um, so crazy, for my, th I think it's three month, uh, February, March, April. Oh my gosh, yes, my three month follow-up after my surgery. I can't believe it's been three months. They'd be like, how are you? I'm like, guess what happened while you were gone? Um, but he gave me a referral at one point for somebody who I think was in New Hampshire, which for me is not far, but, um, and she specializes in, in fitting women for um, like regular bras. It's just that like, I have absolutely no idea what size bra I am. And like, I have zero desire to wear an underwire, though I do want like support because they just still do sag. I mean, not sag sag, but like, um, I knew, I, I noticed with my stitches on the side that he didn't go back into, um, the line where my scar is, is getting a little bit wider and like, I don't want it to be wider. So I need to talk to him about like eliminating scars, not eliminating, but like minimizing the scars. Um, and like getting a, a uh, getting the woman's name again that does bra fittings because it's it's just very he's like wear sports bras, but even after all this time like putting the sports bras on and off is kind of a production like I'd rather have something where I can clasp in the front or the back. Anyway, so yeah, I I got <laughs> I have to get going to work, um, but I just want to come on because it's a stiff morning and. You know, for the people that are like, oh, you know, you didn't need chemo, you didn't need radiation, you're fine. And then you just wake up on a random day and I'm like, I am hurting. And like, it sucks. And I don't want to like take Tylenol. I'd rather like stretch it out and stuff. But I don't know. And it's like my body is just, my body's not allowing me to do what my head wants to do. I don't know. It's frustrating. Anyhow, so yeah, it's not all peaches and cream just because you have the surgery done or just because, you know, just because you're cancer free doesn't mean like your life goes back to what it was, which was good in some ways and not good in others. Um, anyhow, I'm going to get ready for work and I'm going to move slowly and just gotta be patient with myself. I feel like that's the big, the P word. <laughs> the P word of the lesson of like so much of this is just patience. And I'm trying very hard to live in the moment 
and you know just be present in the present and just take it for what it is but that is way easier said than done um yeah and all my 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 power women that are in my paving my my power paving uh i need to think of another p word i'd say princesses but they're they're more than princesses they're like freaking tough ass queens <laughs> But that doesn't start with a P. The women that are in my paving group, um, as much as I like, didn't want to be part of a breast cancer support group, because who wants to be part of a breast cancer anything group? Um, but I am, I am thoroughly getting and feeling a lot of support from the people in that group, and very much look forward to the zooms I have with them, and really hope that we could do something outside of zooms when the whole thing is done and over with. Um, like I feel nauseous right now too. I don't know. Maybe I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's a little funny. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. <laughs> oh my god. I was I was reading something in a magazine <laughs> when I was eating breakfast that somebody was Oh, about this woman who's a, a uh, she's a paraplegic, but she was um, in the Paralympics and stuff, and she just, she had a baby and took her, like, so many needles of, like, IVF to have the baby. I guess that's why pregnancy was on my mind right before I set up my tripod. <laughs> but I'm not pregnant. Um, that can't happen when I'm on Lupron, nor do I want that to happen anyway, but <laughs> no, that ship has sailed. Oh my God, I forgot what I, was even, what I was even saying, but I guess I needed a good laugh. It's like when you're younger and you're on the pill and stuff and you're so concerned about not getting pregnant and then you like you hit the ripe old age of 51. Well, I guess I was 49 when everything happened. And then you're on these meds and it's like, no more pregnancy for you. Let's take your ovary and go and blow them up. Well, they didn't blow them up. But let's just take them and like give them drugs and make them like die and not work. Like I wonder what they even look like right now at, with the Lupron. It's like they want to do. Their, they they want to go to work. <laughs> How ironic. Okay, this is ironic. Like the my ovaries want to go to work. They want to do their thing and make eggs because everyone thinks that like I'm so youthful for my age and stuff. And then along comes Lupron and it's like no, sorry, boom, boom, boom. Like stop making those eggs. And there's all my, my hundreds of like potential babies and the Lupron's like, nope, see ya. That was dark, sorry. Um, yeah, I wonder what they look like. I don't know. But the stomach thing is interesting to me because I am going, ugh, it's like so many doctor's appointments are coming up and freaking I have to go because I've been on 18 minutes already. Um, I do, I am going to see the gynecologist um, I think in like two months, it's like everything happens in like two months, which makes sense because that'll be close to the two year mark from diagnosis when I had like all my appointments and stuff. Um, and I am going for a bone density scan, um, which they do two years after you start the loop or the, ugh, the Zameda to see like how well it's working. Um, so I'll be curious to see what my bones look like. My bone density scan was fine when I had it before the Zameda, so hopefully it continues to be so. Um, and I started saying something before that, and now it's like totally out of my head. I don't know, but I need to get my button gear. I need to get to work. Uh, oh, I love my friends, by the way. I just like throw that out there, but it's, it's my last minute. It's my last 45 seconds because I got to get my show on the road. Um, oh, I, I think I was relating like the Lupron to like life right now where you want to go about your business, but you can't because all these drugs are like changing your body. Oh, and my uterus, that's what it was. <laughs> um, going back from my appointment, um, like I, I talked a while ago about how I, I felt like I looked like I was pregnant. Um, it's not like it, my weight gain is not about like fat. I don't really understand like it's like I can pinch an inch on my belly. It's almost just like my organs are just all moved around because my uterus is just not happy. Like my girl parts are just not 
happy. Some have been removed, but the ones that are there just aren't happy because of all the shit that's that's going on. And I know like you can diet all you want to. That's not going to change the size of your uterus, but um, I'm, I, I'm hoping that when I go to see the gynecologist in like two weeks or two months or whatever, or whatever it is for my appointment, um, that maybe my uterus like calmed down a little bit and is getting more used to all this crap. And maybe I am like naturally in menopause at this point, God willing. Um, and, and that's why my stomach is like kind of getting back down to normal, not normal, but like less than it was before. I don't know, hard to tell. But I say that I love my friends. I was talking last night um, when we were out for dinner that like since the whole seaward journey, I've, my expectations about people have certainly kind of gone out the window um, because of what I saw with like who stuck around, who was there to support me and who just kind of disappeared or ignore the fact that I even had anything go wrong. I was around a whole bunch of people this weekend that have not seen me since my diagnosis. And only one of them asked me anything about like how I'm feeling. And I'm like, really? Like I went through a life altering fucking crazy, crazy, crazy experience. And I can't try to understand why. I don't want to understand why. But the protective gen of gen is like, I need to focus on the people that make me feel good. Even if it's someone I just met like three weeks ago. That's who I have to put my energy into. That's who I need to... Those are the relationships I need to focus on. So as I'm like looking sideways to say, oh, who's texting me? You know, you shouldn't have to try so hard. Like, I'll, I'll leave you with this, which has nothing to do with, ah, oh, fuck. Again, body saying, slow the fuck down. I need a, a good name for my foobs. I don't know what. But that twinge I just had, like, that's all muscular. And it's just because I'm talking a lot. And I, even though I'm not moving, like, the act of talking is moving. And my left boob, which is the one where they did all the work, is just, like, I get this feeling. And it's just, like, slow the hell down. So I will speak slower and finish my thought about friends and then hang up with all of you. Um... Yeah, I, I have stopped trying to, um, I mean, any relationship takes work, but if you're the only one doing the work, that's not really a relationship. I don't even just mean romantic. I mean, like, friendships, family, all of that. And I admit, like, I, you know, I have been spacey since all this stuff happened. Um, but that's why, like, I leave myself notes and reminders on my phone or on Alexa or uh, on Google Calendar or whatever so I don't forget things. Like I set a ton of reminders for things so I don't forget. But I don't I don't bend over backwards anymore to try to be around the people that I used to be around when they're not trying to be around me. Like the right people will come into into my life and the right people will stay. And um, right now, like, I, I weirdly, I, I don't think I've had a group of friends like this, gosh, since like high school, where like I can call people and, and we'll like, get up and go to a concert or we'll go shoot pool or we'll have like a nice dinner out. Like the things that I like to do. And I don't have to like try so hard because I know that they want to do those things too. And they want to spend time with me too. And I mean, yes, it's a conscious thing, but 
it has to be a give and take. And my friend that just texted me when I went sideways like that, um, yeah, she's just like checking in, like, you know, it's been a while, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll go do something together. And I love that. You know, it can't just be one-sided and you can't be chasing the people that disappear. I mean, you know, you can up to a certain point, but if, again, if you're the only one who's working at all of it, that's not, that's not a healthy relationship. It's, it's got to be both ways. So I'm very grateful for my friends and, um, yeah, they, 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 they keep me going. My friend came over to help me put my cash together. I haven't seen her in like forever. Um, <laughs> And I had such a blast with her. It was just such like a normal thing. Like, you know, your friend comes over to help you put furniture together. And like, you know, she's pretty strong. And, she <laughs> and it was just, it was fun. And it was light. And, and we just like enjoyed each other's company. And at the end of the day, I have a living room. And it's awesome. All right. I'm going to go now and eat my now cold oatmeal. Um, and just move slow and get to where I'm going. Um, fashion's not going to be my friend today. I don't really care. I need to wear heels. I've been wearing flat shoes and I think that's not been helping too with my Achilles. It looks intimidating to wear like three inch heels, but right now, like I need to have a heel because my Achilles has been bothering me again, but my shoes are all in boxes. I don't know where my shoes are for the spring that have heels, but, um, I'll do the best that I can. All right, everyone, be kind and compassionate with yourself today. And uh, that's all I got. So till next time, bye.